Well, if I had it in the chat. Okay, there so you go. Good. All right, call the meeting order. This is the Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission of August 17th, 2021 at 7.01 p.m. Uh, roll call, we have Katie, Barry, Kevin Wilcox, Kevin Hussein, and Joy on the phone. Uh, no old business, new business, wetlands map amendment application for two brothers auto. LLC. So I got to bring in George. Oh, well, we need a mo motion to reopen that, don't we? Uh, just um, to open it. It hasn't been opened yet. Yeah. Okay. Correct. We need a motion to open it. So moved. Motion by Kevin Wilcox. Yeah. Peter, I don't think you made me a co host. I don't know how I can do that. Okay, so you got to bring in George. Uh, attendees. Robert Arsenal, Blanchett, George Logan. Allow to talk. <clears throat> also, just a small note, it is Monday, August 16th, not the 17th. Right. What did I say? 17th. Uh, <clears throat> George, you there? We can't see you. I know I'm here, but I don't know why I can't see myself in my. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, for whatever reason, my. Um, yeah, interesting. My camera is not on. Is there a little thing that you're supposed to do there? Just mm -hmm. your name. Uh, now, Peter, what you got to do is right-click right on George's name and, and bring in video. I got mute, remove permission to talk, hide non-video participants, and remove. So I don't know what, what to do. I'm going to check my connection, make sure my camera is connected, but I, I, I think it is. So hold on. Does everybody see mute and stop video in the lower left corner of their screens? Yeah. So George should have a stop video or a start video. Uh, I, I just promote, uh, changed him to a panelist. Right, that's what you gotta do. Okay. So George, you should over here. Just gotta, there we go. There you are. All right. Okay. It was better before. <laughs> Could you bring Mr. Mr. Arsenal on? Because I think he has the uh, the wetlands amendment uh, map for okay. that he might be able to share if someone lets him. All right, you have to make him a panelist. Yep. Uh, I I promoted you to co-host, Alan. Okay. Promote right. two panelists. All we'll right. be re. Okay. All right. Bob, you're muted. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I don't see my picture, but oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Start video. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to share uh, the amendment map so that George can reference it, if that's okay. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, that was there. We go. Beautiful. All right. So I guess I could start again. George Logan for the record, Rim Ecological Services, a certified soil scientist, uh, wetland professional wetland scientist. Uh, this is a, if I recall, a 2.13, a 2.31 acre parcel. Uh, it's located at 15 Highland Park Drive. Uh, you can see on your map Highland Park Drive at the bottom, uh, Peters Road on the left, and the north arrow is pointing to the right. Um, you see two lines on this particular map. One is in red, and that particular red line 
is what uh, your official, your currently your official wetlands map shows uh, as being the wetland. And um, this was also a wetland that um, was investigated by Peter at some point uh, early in the process. And he determined uh, that there was need to delineate the, the, the wetlands in this parcel. It had not been done before. There had been another application many years ago that went through with a proposed development. Uh, this was the line that was used at that time. And so, uh, but when Peter took his first visit, he noticed that uh, there was a, a big discrepancy between what I ended up delineating, which is your the blue line. Um, if you come in a little closer, can you do that, Bob? Yes, I can. And you can go right. So you will see oh, that good. my wetland boundary delineation was done in June, mid-June. I've been there a couple of times since then. Um, and one time with Peter, and we'll, we'll explain that in a little bit. And so I started my wetland delineation apparently off-site on the Gen Genic Realty LLC. Uh, so that's uh, my first two flags are on their property. Obviously, that those had to be taken down and not shown. Uh, as we've had experience in the past few uh, projects that we don't want to um, leave hanging chads, I mean flags on other properties. Um, so that's the number 383. And then uh, my last flag during my June delineation ended just past this pipe that you see there at the bottom left corner where it says flared in. That's an inlet, which means that water overflow water from the wetland complex enters that and then enters the Peters Road, apparently Peters Road system. Uh, so I had stopped at wetland uh, A27 that you see there. Um, but when Peter and I went out to uh, look at the wetland together, uh, he asked me to continue delineating uh, sort of in a westerly direction and that I did. And you can see that I ended up going to wet wetland flag A32, which is at the toe of a slope of a fill slope uh, that's prominent on that portion of the property. So as far as the wetlands are concerned, give you a little bit of a background. Um, back in nine, sometime between 1990 and 1995, oh, sorry, about nine, between 1986 and 1990, I should say, um, the industrial park was, was developed and Highland Park Drive went in. And a lot of activities took place uh, at that time in, in the sort of the eastern portion of the site. As you can see, there's an easement that goes through the site, parallels the road for a little bit, and then hangs, hangs a, a, a right, if you will, as you're coming down. Uh, so all that is obviously within fill. And what I noticed as I'm <laughs> poking around at the edge of, of what apparently appeared to be the wetland, is that I would say 90%, maybe I'm exaggerating, 85% of the uplands on this site are disturbed, which means they have fill or they've been disturbed uh, through some other activities such as you know, developing this drainage system. And very often, especially say around flags, uh, A14 and upwards, so to my 20s, five or six and seven and going on, all those flags are actually at the edge of the fill. So it made delineations from then on sort of easy. The difficult part was above that uh, because it was, as you can see, very transitional. Uh, the slopes are not, the slopes are gradual. So what you have there now, as far as wetland resources are concerned is, um, uh, back in the sort of the southwestern portion of the property, those are young woods, young red maple swamps. You see there that we've uh, delineated a seasonally flooded area. I did that using the best possible aerial photography that I had with that had topo on it. Uh, that was from Connecticut Eco. 
2016 aerial photograph and topography the, from the stage GIS. Um, I gave that to the surveyor and we've kind of placed the seasonally flooded area. And, and Peter and I went and looked at it. It looks like at the most, there's 10 or, 10 or 11 inches of water that could at any time during the high season be there. Um, but we did, I, we did not, and I did not know it in the past. And I did not know when I was out there with Peter, any amphibian activity. So it's apparently not utilized by amphibians, at least during my site inspections. Um, the soils here, obviously I told you that the uplands are predominantly uh, disturbed. So those would be what we call eudorthins. And we have glacial lacustrine soils in this area, as you probably expect. Um, we had that in the couple of properties to the north when we did that other project uh, a few moons ago. And there, so there we have the we're very poorly drained and poorly drained Skidiko, Shaker, Mabid soil series complex um, derived from glacial lacustrine soils. Uh, so those are the two soil types uh, that, that I in indicated on my on my uh, report, which is dated June 22nd, 2021. So in this central portion of the wetland that you can see sort of the, um, the scrub, shrub line and or tree line, it's, they're sort of coincident. In some places it's woods, in some places it's just shrub. You see the area that's within the wetland, that's uh, basically a wet meadow. Um, and that's what's up against the upland for the most part. So that's what I have to give you as far as the wetland delineation and wetland map amendment information that you typically like to hear from. Thank you. Um, anything else from the applicant? That's it. That's it for, for this one, yep. Okay, Peter. Hey, can we... Uh have uh, Mr. Ocean I'll unshare his screen? Sure. There we go. Now we have faces. Uh, I, uh, I agree with what uh, Mr. Logan uh, said about the, the wetlands and uh, our visit there together to look at the pond in particular. Um, he said there were, there were no amphibians there and uh, we did not see any or any other uh, evidence of a vernal pool. So that's an important distinction to make. Um, the, uh, the area is definitely, uh, um, you know, uh, older disturbance from the construction of the, of the uh, stormwater um, pipes that run through there. And I think that the, uh, um, the delineation is accurate. And I would say that we, we want to, um, uh, you know, if the commission approves this application, the, the official map will be modified, uh, as I mentioned in my report from uh, that north property line, I think it was flag uh, three, A3, uh, okay. to, um, uh, to the flag, uh, did we go to 27 or 28? I forget. We started at 27, we went all the way to 30, A32. Okay, so at uh, maybe at flag 31, I think is closest to our to our official map, but it's not very far off. So we'll be, you know, bringing the two together at at that line. Um, there are, I forget how many exactly. Uh, there's a bunch more wetlands. I don't think George mentioned the numbers, but it may be. Uh, it may be um, important. Uh, the uh, George flagged about 1.2 acres of wetlands. The official map indicates about 0 0.89, so quite a bit more. Um, and as I say here, he identified more, significantly more wetlands in the central part of the state site, excuse me, of the site, and less wetlands in the southern portion. So uh, I'm in agreement with. Uh, um, with Mr. Logan's uh, delineation. Um, the applicant did submit the revised wetlands map amendment plan on the 13th as requested. And I believe I sent it by email to uh, all of the commissioners. Yep. So uh, I'm recommending 
the uh, adoption, uh, or rather I'm recommending the approval of the application and adoption of the delineated wetlands to the official map. That's all for me. Um, any questions from the public? You need to raise your hand. Seeing no questions from the public, any questions from the commission? I had a quick couple questions. Um, Kevin, go I ahead. I from outside. I don't know if you can hear me clearly. Um, Peter, you were saying we're going to close 832, the last flag, or is it 831 to the existing the red line to, to close? Yeah, you're you're breaking up, Kevin. I'm sorry. You were saying you're going to close um, 831, flag 831 or 832 to the wetlands that we have as the existing, correct? So correct. You're breaking someone's, up again. Yeah, someone's plugging a banjo. Kevin, stop drinking while you're talking. <laughs> well, let me take a video off if that's, I don't know if that's going to help or not. Can you hear me clearly now or is it still? Yeah, yeah. yeah we can hear you. Yeah, I, I apologize. Uh, I don't know if you heard me, um, 831 or 832 will close close the proposed flag, you know, the new flag into the old flag in line, correct? Yes. All right, how does, now how does the new flag affect the easement with most of it being now in the upland review? It doesn't affect the easement at all. Okay. The, uh, the, the, um, the easement is there for the stormwater, um, uh, system. There's a pipe that runs through there. Uh, when when Highland Park Drive was developed, they built the storm drainage system in a very peculiar way, in my opinion. Uh, the southerly end of that road uh, drains to uh, that system that runs through this property um, and discharges to a constructed stormwater detention basin on the south side of Peters Road. Uh, the storm drainage system that's in Peters Road drains to a different location altogether. So where the wetland flags line up really doesn't make, doesn't change the easement at all. All right, um, that's all I had, so thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Any comments from the public? Any comments from the commission? Any last words from the applicant? You good, George? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. moved. Made by Barry, second, second by Kevin Wilcox. Um, is there a motion to vote on this? Come on. Yeah, I, I make a motion so we can um, close the um, the wet. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. We close, we close the uh... public hearing is closed. We're looking for a motion to approve. Correct. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion for us to approve the application a map amendment for Two Brothers Auto LLC at 15 Highland Park Ave, Lot 5007, Map 378. Um, updated, what's the updated date you have? I have July 8 on here, but I don't see 832 on my map. No, the, the revised plan is uh, 813. Correct. 813, with the revised plan map 813, as submitted to Peter. Okay. Were there any uh, the motion. staff recommendations, Peter? Yes, I'm recommending the standard three conditions of approval Mm -hmm. um, revised map, uh, filing of the map on the, on the, uh, land records and, um, uh, you know, making a few technical revisions. Okay. Then you'll incorporate that into your motion, Kevin. Yes, that's fine with that amendment. Friendly amendment. And is there a second? I second it. Oh. There's also one last little adjustment to his motion. 
It's Highland Park Drive, not Highland Park Avenue. Did I write Highland Park Avenue? No, Kevin Hussein said Avenue. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Huh. Highland Park Drive. Sorry. Thanks, Kevin Wilcox. No problem. Right. Seconded by uh, Barry. Yeah. Hey, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Okay, moving on to item number two, wetlands permit for two brothers, LLC, Auto, uh, LLC 15 Highland Park Drive for construction of automotive repair and sales facility. This is, is there a motion to open a public hearing? So moved. Moved by Kevin Wilcox. Second. Seconded by Katie. All in favor, say aye. 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 I, I think the second was from Barry. Oh, Barry? Never. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, so it's open. Public hearing is now open. And who was the presenter? That would be me, Robert Arsenal. I'm the, I'm the engineer for the project. Okay. I'd like to go ahead and share my screen again, if I could. All righty. Alan, the uh, the applicant, Mr. Demos, is here. Do I need to make him a uh, panelist? Excuse me. Robert, do we need to bring in the um, applicant? Uh, do we need to bring in the applicant? Um, well, if only if he's if you have questions of him. I'm going to promote him. Okay. okay. Bring him in. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Alderson-Alt, I believe you have the floor. All right. Thank you. Um, George gave a pretty good explanation of the property, so you pretty much know what's going on there. Um, I just wanted to start with a little bit of history for the project or the property. <laughs> this, this is what was approved, um, you know, be as it may, it was a long time ago, it was back in 2005, but this showed a 21,000 square foot building with parking, etc. cetera. Um, Robert, is there any way we can cut right to what you're proposing for yeah this well, i just wanted to i just wanted to say this is what the applicant used when he went ahead and purchased the property well, yeah so, which isn't relevant now no it's not but now this this map here is a combination map i did um which shows the wetlands it shows um the setbacks and it shows the easement along here what you see cross hatching like an orange color that's basically the only thing that's left over that's not wetlands out of the easement and behind the building lines. That's a little less than half an acre. So that's pretty much what we started with when we had to, uh, we had to do this. But originally when we submitted, uh, we didn't have the new wetlands line. And the original submission here with the wetlands line, if you notice, it's got significant activity. Um, we would end up with 6,500 square feet of disturbance because we had a 60 foot building by 150 plus parking on this end, um, on the southern end. And obviously that was very extreme. We, we felt that we were never going to get anything like that, that extreme uh, proposed. So what we did, we looked at a diff couple of different scenarios. My first scenario was to shrink the building. I talked to the applicant and he was willing to shrink the building from 60 feet to 50 feet, which would have brought the back of the building down 10 more feet, but it still made an, a, a disturbance of somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000 square feet, which was still fairly significant. So one of the other things we looked at was the possibility of reversing the site, putting the building at this end and putting the parking at, at this end um, it has a lot less disturbance in the wetlands, but there's a couple of reasons we, we chose not to go with this. 
as was mentioned, there's this drainage easement with a pipe, a 30 inch pipe that goes through here. The pipe is very shallow. And in order to make the drainage at the, at the, uh, the northern end of the site work here for the, for the park parking lot, this would require about four and a half to five feet of fill under the entire parking lot. Plus uh, it would also, what you see cross hatch or shaded in orange, this would require a ZBA uh, variance to put parking in the front yard. Otherwise all this parking ends up up in the wetlands. So it's kind of a trade-off. And when we looked at the uh, economic, uh, prudent, the prudent economic feasibility of this, it just doesn't work because because of the amount of construction costs associated with, with the amount of fill that he would need here. Um, plus it, it, the site lends itself to have the parking up in this higher area and the building down here. So we, we kind of discounted this one because of that. The one that we're proposing or we would like to propose is reducing the building to 50 feet by 150, as, as was mentioned, keeping the parking at this end because the drainage here, the drainage for this easement runs in the southerly direction. So the grade of, of this, the drainage system is lower here than at the northern end. So it's a much easier connection for us to connect to this system. And it would require virtually almost no fill for the parking lot at all. And it would reduce the wetlands disturbance to 2650 total. Now it would still require um, a ZBA variance for us to move this corner of the building from the 40 foot building line to create it, to make it 32 feet, just at this one corner. So this triangle in orange that you see here would require a variance. Plus this little bit of parking right here, uh, because it, it goes over the building line as well, that would require, those two items would require uh, a ZBA variance. As we threw this thing back and forth and discussed it, we know that no matter what we do now, because of the restrictions on the property, he's gonna need a variance. So what we're thinking is to submit the, these drawings for the wetlands, uh, for your consideration, uh, maybe at the next meeting for a full blown site plan with this reduced impact and also submit an application to the ZBA for a variance at the same time for this, so that we don't you know, waste too much time in trying to get, get the thing moving for, for the applicant. Um, so what we're looking for is a little bit of guidance. Yeah, I know you can't you know, go on the record and say, yeah, if we submit this, it's gonna get approved. But I know in talking to George um, and talking to Peter, there are mitigations that we can do to offset this develop or this intrusion uh, into the wetlands over in this location here. There's some upland areas here and there are other upland areas. Uh, plus I know George had mentioned possibly some enhancements to the wetlands. So maybe George, if you wanna talk about that a little bit. Uh, uh, oh, let me just let me just jump in here for a second. Sure. Peter, is this a preliminary review or is this a full blown application? This is a preliminary review. It doesn't say that on the agenda item, right? Uh, it does not, but it does say on my staff report, mm -hmm. preliminary review. And that's why we have no site maps? No, we have site maps and they submitted a full set of plans, but that was before the wetlands were reflagged. Correct. So those plans, which you may, I believe, have in your packet, do not show this modified uh, building and, and layout. So. Um, my, uh, it is a preliminary review. However, the, the public hearing uh, being opened is the appropriate thing to do uh, with, as I recommend in my staff report, the understanding that they wouldn't have fully revised site plans for tonight's meeting, that they would have them ready for the September okay. 20th meeting. Um, right. I, just, I just wanna put in one, one uh, caveat. Uh, the ZBA meeting usually is the first Monday of the month, but in September, the first Monday is Labor Day. So the ZBA meeting is on the, the 13th. I think it's the 12th, I think. No, so it's, the, it's the 
September 12th is a Sunday. September 13th is the I'm Monday. Sorry, you're right. 13th. So uh, assuming that an application is heard uh, by the by the ZBA on the 12th, then the, I'm sorry, on the 13th, then the Wetlands Commission is meeting the next week. Uh, right. So your your time is short to get that ZBA application in. Yeah, I believe we have all the materials we need to submit it, a, a ZBA application. Okay. Um, going through the application form, basically this, this page here um, is really what they would require. They want to know, you know, the layout, uh, what what the cause of the, 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 what's causing you to have a hardship for the variance. Yeah. Sort of thing. Well, you, I think you definitely have a hardship. Hmm. Yeah. But I'm, but this isn't the ZBA, so. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. So basically, that's where we are. Like Peter said, we had a full set of drawings that we submitted, but most of this, what we had, can be salvaged as far as layout goes, um, because this parking lot is pretty much the same. The drainage before we had a detention area, which, in which we didn't realize we could connect to the system. So we will be connecting here and we'll provide... Uh, uh, you know, the, the proper uh, environmental safeguards on the system itself prior to discharge and, and so forth. Um, but yeah, we would like to go forward with both. We think the timing is such that it, it will lend itself to, to helping us with the application process. So, so just to be clear, any comments or suggestions we give you are not um, permanent and don't take for a fact. Exactly. Because when we see the final plans, yep. we can say, no, we don't like that. Yes. No, we I totally understand. Okay. And if you'd like, Mr. Chairman, I can spend maybe a minute and a half giving you a little bit of uh, potential mitigation. Okay. Um, I'll use, I had things that I could share, but I think in the interest of time, since we're, it looks like we're coming in with a the full boat um, for your next meeting that I don't have to do that. I'll save it for then. But uh, as you folks know, um, the typical situation in, in this town and by your commission is that if we're going to uh, fill uh, wetlands, even if you know we're along an edge of, of a filled wetland, say, because honestly, I, a lot of what you see here is uplands. If you look at the old aerial <laughs> photographs was actually wetlands, <laughs> a lot of it was. But at any rate, um, there's not a lot of opportunity to hit your 1.5 to one ratio, but I'll tell you what opportunity there is. So if you see that little parking lot that's sticking out on the west and just south of the building, if you look at flag A19, so you have 18, you have 919, is a little further to the south, Bob. Oh yes, right here. Right. So from about flag 19 to about flag 21, a little more than 21, if you go in there, uh, there's an area of about 900 to 1,000 square feet in the wetland that's a very dense patch of common reed, Phragmites. Uh, now you say, how did that get there? <laughs> this is interesting. So you remember back in 2005, there was an application that came to this commission and there was approval at that time, not using the right wetland delineation, but just, you know, what the town had on the, on the, on their maps, um, that was approved. And so sometime between 2005, 2006, the entire area that was going to be the footprint of the building and the parking lot was cleared. So they cleared the wetland. So machinery got into the wetland and you know what happens when machinery gets into the wetland. Uh, you can bring stuff that you're not supposed to bring in. So that's when the Phragmites came in, because before that, it was sort of more of a scrub, shrub, young forest. Uh, so there's a patch there of about 900, 1,000 square feet that can be excavated by reaching over from the edge of the fill, you know, 40 feet, say, if you have a long boom excavator, and create an enhancement by number one, taking out the Phragmites, and number two, creating a, not a, a wet, wet meadow, but a, but a shallow marsh, deep enough so that the Phragmites can do it. And, and Phragmites doesn't like water that's typically more than a foot to 15 inches in depth uh, on average. So that's, and then of course you could plant it with good stuff. 
going up from that patch uh, up to the edge of, of the parking lot, not up against it, but you know, obviously you're gonna have a slope there, but if you can imagine that two thirds of its width could be excavated out and then carried all the way to above flag mm, 20, between 23 and 24. And you say, well, is that woods? Well, if you look at the aerial photographs, that upland area is actually uh, in Vesa Madam Olive. We like that. Well, we don't like it, but we like it as far as mitigation is concerned. So if you took that area out, you probably have about 1,200 or so to 15 to 1,200 to 1,300 square feet of, of wetland that you create by taking that old fill that was placed on the wetland and uh, redoing the wetland, basically, and planting it up uh, into a scrub shrub and a nice wet meadow. So that's those are the opportunities, about 12 to 1,500 square feet of uh, wetland restoration slash creation and about 900 to 1,000 feet of, of wetland enhancement by taking out the Phragmites. Now, there are little, little small patches of Phragmites here and there. I haven't really looked at those carefully, but I have time between now and then. If I see that there's another opportunity where we can reach in and do the same thing that we're doing in the big patch, then I'll include that in our mitigation plan. And then I'll probably have some other suggestions uh, for enhancements within the wetland itself. Um, so normally we would, okay. So Peter, you staff report? Yeah. Um... Uh, Mr. Arsenal, can you unshare your screen, please? Oh, sure. Um, I have, uh, uh, you know, I visited the site now three times, um, and I think there's there's opportunity here for um, mitigation uh, more uh, on the enhancement side rather than on the um, rather than on the creating side. However, George just pointed out that there's some options for that as well. So I think the the applicant. Um, uh, has, uh, you know, looked at some options already, uh, some alternatives, which is a good thing, but I think it's going to end up being mostly uh, wetland enhancement for mitigation rather than creation, which I think is, is fine. Um, it also occurred to me as I was looking at the, at the, uh, at the sketch or at the, uh, the alternative going that that building um, is you said it was 50 by 50 by 150, I think. And um, you're, you would be going for a, a, a ZBA variance for that size building. Um, if you added another 10 feet, you would gain 1500 more square feet of impact. You'd still be under the 5,000. So I guess my, my suggestion is for the, for the applicant to go for what they need rather than what they think they can get. If you follow my my reasoning, uh, I think there's also some opportunity to perhaps move the building further to the south and impact less wetlands along the north side. But you know, uh, the devil is in the details, and Mr. Arsenal is going to have to work work through those details and decide how to how to move forward. You know, with the uh, with the whole. Uh, application, particularly to ZBA, I think that's, that's one where, um, you know, there's obviously a, a hardship. Uh, the site has got wetlands, it's got these storm drainage easements on it, and it has two 40 foot front yards. So it's, it's really quite restrictive in, in what could be built there. I did just to answer your question. I did look at uh, possibly moving the building more to the south. But the problem is, if you look at that corner of the building, we're right up against the, uh, the drainage easement. And I know we could put parking and so forth in the easement, but I would be hesitant to put the building in the office. Yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch that detail. You're absolutely right. Building, uh, no building in the easement. Correct. Okay. Um, so are there any questions from the public? Any questions from the commission? I, I do have there one is, question. There is one from the public out there. There is one? Yeah. Um, it's an Andy Morrison. I will unmute him right now. That's the wrong application, Jonathan. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. 
It's and then Chris. I'll take his hand down until we get to the right application. Yeah, the hand's Chris. been up for a while. Chris okay. Jenick. Okay. Hello. Mr. Morrison, Mr. how are you? Not bad. Yourself? All right. I thought I could Hi. get for a minute. Is... Okay. You're, you're, you're on the next application, I believe. Yes. Oh. You, were, you were brought in by mistake. So I'm going to remove you back to the waiting room, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank Stand you. by. Hey, Logan. How are you? No, nope, you <laughs> did the wrong one. <laughs> Hello? Yes. This is Chris. Is this the two brothers application? Yes, ma'am. All right, sorry. I was at work and I just got out and I wasn't sure. So um, Don is driving and so he can't be on, but one of the questions was, was the concern for grease, oil, et cetera? What was the plan for that? I didn't know if I missed that. Uh, we're... we're um, looking at a preliminary plan right now for the site development and uh, most likely this public hearing is going to be continued to the September 20th meeting. So okay. that, All right. that, that question is relevant only to the TPC application. Right, the wetlands, am I correct in that? Impacting, etc. also? Uh, no. Well, no, I guess it is a wet. I should, let me retract that statement. It is a wetlands concern. Correct. And then I guess the other thing was, so we've already got a problem with the water on one side. What is the plan for the water on this side? All right. It sounds like you're potentially moving the building closer to the 65 Highland Park, or is that, am I wrong on that as well? The building is proposed in the north end of this property, which would be closest to 65, yes. Okay, what's the water mitigation um, that we're looking at for that as well? Because again, like I said, we're seeing it on the 105. What's the plan for this one? We're gonna be surrounded by water problems. Is Sorry. there a plan for actually, that? Actually, the, um, anything from the building itself, from the roof and so forth, would be considered clean water. That would be discharged to the rear. Um, that's that was what we were told for 105 and we are getting it on our property so you can understand our concerns about getting run off the other way yeah and this particular property runs from it drains from north to south so anything going off of this would, would end up down towards peter's road towards peter's road yes okay all right um I think that was the only two questions for now, especially if you're gonna push it off till um, the next month. Okay. But you're just, but the building's gonna be closer towards 65, am I correct in this? It's gonna be close like, to the street, I believe. It's gonna be close the to the Highland Park. line or the street? Highland Park it's, towards the edge of the property. It's actually gonna be, approximately 27 feet from that property line, from your property line. But towards okay. Highland Park Road. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, she wanted to know, if she wants to know the distance from our building to their property line. Yes, it would, correct. It'd be 27 feet. Okay, okay, how far are you to Highland Park Road? Um, we're proposing, if we get the variance, we're proposing 32 feet. Okay. To the front. So you're property. way forward. There. Okay. All right. So, any questions from the commission at this point, or do you want to wait till, or do you any wait till the next meeting? I, I had a, I, I'll wait till the next meeting, but I had a quick question. Um, just because I'll bring it up now, and I apologize because my internet is a little choppy. On the site plan you showed, I know um, George was talking on you know, adjusting some of those flags, I think 17, 18, 19. But the parking you have right now, is that mostly just for parking for building occupancy or is that also for the car sales part? It's for the everything to do with the business. Yeah. Okay. For, for and that's all, 
that's all the parking you have right now? Or can you remove four or five of those spaces and shift everything down south so you can then not be in the wetlands? Or those are the actual parking spots you need? Because if you removed about five of those parkings, you will be able to shift that entire site south without affecting the wetlands and keeping the foot building footprint. Yeah, but we can't move the building south because of the the drainage easement. I, I don't have the plans in front of me, so I, if you, I can, I can share the screen again if you'd like. No, no, that's fine. Okay, you're saying you looked at that alternative of moving it further south, but yeah. that because of the easement and how shallow that that 30 inch storm pipe is. Yeah, so. it doesn't doesn't work. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so. I do have one one question. Okay. So, so in the in the plan that you showed us, the building is going to impact two thousand six hundred and fifty square feet of wetlands. Now, is that just the building itself, or does that take into account a buffer around the building that would also encroach on the wetlands? I'm assuming you're not going to want wetlands right up against the foundation of the building. No, the shaded area that we show with the 2650, I like to try and be somewhat realistic with this because I know we can't, you know, have wetlands or grade right against the building. So what I'm showing is actually um, based on the grading, no less than eight feet. And I think in one corner, six feet away from the building, but it averages out to be actually about eight feet. Okay. Just curious. Mr. Arsenal, can I ask you to put that up on the screen again so sure. everybody can see? Sure. Yeah, that's this area right here that's shaded in pink. Yep. If you see, it's it goes oh, away from the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. I when I do these, I try and be somewhat realistic. You know, you don't want to say, okay, well, we're just going to do the wetlands right up against the building. No, it never it never works out that way. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, why why you got that up there? Is there a draining system for the parking lot? Yes, it would be there's we would be installing catch basins with pipe here and um, a special structure here at this end uh, for the removal of sands and, 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 and oils and so forth prior to connection to the, to the system. What kind of special uh, equipment you gonna have a separator there or yeah yeah basically it's a uh, basically or it well, basically it's it's a high you know high level uh, uh, separator in this area here right. you'll have that in details on the oh yeah. yeah yeah okay all right all right, it's all, all right. It's so, called a storm scepter system so yeah our, i have a question too are you planning for floor drains inside the building that's something that we're talking to the applicant about um if he does require any kind of we discussed it. If he does require any kind of grease and oil separation, he's willing to do it with uh, uh, facilities inside the building. He's done that before, as far as grease traps, that kind of stuff. So everything would be contained in the building, and that be prior to discharge. And it would discharge to the sanitary sewer. Yes. Yes. No, is that regulated by by deep or by the? Oh yes. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. They actually discourage floor drains, but if you're going to have them, you got to have an oil water separator. Yes, exactly. All right, so we can table this to the next meeting. Yep, continue the public hearing and table the application to the September 20th meeting. Okay. Is there a motion to table this to September 20th meeting? So moved. Seconded. Made by Barry, seconded by Kevin Wilcox. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Okay, so we'll see you in September. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Okay. okay. It'll be hard on the next guy that you're doing. That's Jim McManus, a good friend of mine. So just, just letting you know. <laughs> okay. So uh, we can, I think. Are you going to bring uh, in uh, Mr. Morrison? Yep. Uh, okay, here we go. 
promote two panelists. You're getting pretty good at this, Peter. Ah, hey. Impressed. I'm. Uh, when, when he finally gets it mastered, we'll be back in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take, yeah. take We're never going Jose's right. job for him. <laughs> and take it easy on Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Morrison, how are you? Wow, you're very, you're very, uh, your your picture is very dark, and you need to unmute. Can you? There you go. Hey. Well, All right, you. much better. All right, so okay. now we need to make a motion to huh? open the yeah. public hearing. You could hear me. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. in this case. Um, these applications are timing out. So uh, this is a map amendment and wetlands permit applications. And I, it's my recommendation that the commission open both public hearings and hear some preliminary comments from the applicant uh, and ask some questions if you want to, and then table them again till the September 20th meeting. But the uh, um, the commission has 65 days from the official receipt to open a public hearing, and tonight is the 56th day. So the public hearings, uh, as I recommend uh, them to be opened um, and uh, continue to the September uh, 20th meeting. Uh, Mr. Morrison, I'm sure we'll have, have something to say, but I just want to say that the uh, um, the requirement uh, to have the wetland flags re-staked by the surveyor um, has has not been done. I spoke to Mr. Baresi today on the phone, and he said that there were um, uh, um, there were uh, site constraints uh, for him to do that. He was not able to do that. He did assure me that he would be able to do it before the next meeting. <laughs> Uh, and so, again, we have uh, a map amendment application uh, and then a, uh, a, a wetlands permit application. Um, the commission, uh, if you take my recommendation, should open them and then hear some preliminary discussion comments uh, or presentation and then table to the, to the September 20th meeting. Uh, Again, uh, the the time uh, to have these public hearings is running out. So uh, I think it would behoove uh, the commission to uh, to accept my recommendation. Uh, but it is uh, you know something that we've been we've been uh, dealing with for the last couple three meetings. We did not have a meeting last month, and that uh, was uh, because we didn't have any. Um, new applications, and at that time, the, the flags hadn't been set. So we couldn't really have the meeting last time uh, just to open the public hearings and close them, I didn't think was reasonable. But tonight, I think that's the way to go uh, so that these things don't time out, at, so to speak. Okay, I'll, I'll be quiet now. Okay. So we need to make a motion to open the... Uh, Okay, so I move that we open the wetlands map amendment application of Andy Morrison, 1236 Blue Hills Avenue, lot 27A, map 236, owner Marie Dunn, uh, public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joy Chance. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Okay, public hearing is now open. Now... Do we, is um, George Logan going to speak on behalf? No, some guy named McManus. No, oh, McManus is for the, for numbers five oh. and six. Oh, I thought George was passing off to him. Yeah, no, George Logan was the, was the soil scientist of record here. So uh, I think, um, you know, he, he planted the flags uh, uh, more than a year ago. Many of them were still um, not visible. Many of them were. So I've asked the applicant to have the surveyor replace the flags that are missing. 
nothing. So who's, so, rep, who's gonna speak on the applicant's behalf for the soil scientist? Well, for the for the next meeting, it's gonna have to be Mr. Logan. For, how about for this meeting for the map amendment? No, I I didn't ask him to to make a presentation okay. for this one. I All think right. we should we should just so take. Can't so go forward until open the flags it. are back. And Say it again, Barry. Table. I assume we can't go forward until the flags are replaced. Correct. Yeah. So. so there's really no reason to have a discussion even about this. We should just table it now and move on to the next portion. Right. All right. So let's table it to the next meeting. Right. You want to make that motion, Kevin? Wilcox? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to table the wetlands map amendment application of Andy Morrison, 1236 Blue Hills Avenue, lot 27A, map three, uh, 236, owner Marie Dunn, until the next meeting, which is September 20th. Okay. Seconded Second. by Barry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Okay, is there a motion to open up wetlands permit application for Andy Morris Morrison for 1236 Blue Hills Avenue? All right, I'm getting used to this, so I may as well just keep going. Hey, you're like to, yeah, you're, uh, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to make a motion to open the wetland permit application of Andy Morrison, 1236 Blue Hills Avenue, Lot 27A, Met 236, for the subdivision of land with wetlands and water courses and to construct a contractor's yard. Owner Marie Dunn uh, for a public hearing. Second, is there a second? Second by Joy Chance. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, abstain, so it's unanimous. Okay. So basically, Peter, this is the same thing. We're just opening and closing, uh, opening and tabling. Yeah, yes, but I would like to uh, make a few comments and I think Mr. Morrison would like to as well. Okay. Um, w this, uh, this site has been uh, pretty much operating without permits for some time. Uh, I have um, uh, done other um, um, uh, enforcement actions. Uh, an enforcement action was taken in earlier this year and uh, it seems that the uh, um, part of the requirements of the judgment was for the applicant to obtain the necessary permits to comply with the wetlands regulations. And the, um, uh, the, uh, the applications were filed, the fees were paid earlier this year in order to accomplish that goal of becoming in compliance. Um, but uh, I recommend um, that the applicant work to achieve this uh, uh, compliance in a stepped process as follows. And I'm reading from my staff report, page two of three. Um, number one is to restate the lost wetland flags and property corners. Uh, and I believe that's the only thing that's incomplete to have the map amendment application uh, 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 ready for a vote. Um, the second step would be to remove all the imported material from the access way east of 1240 Blue Hills Avenue um, and in other filled wetlands or water courses and, and spread the topsoil um, uh, to uh, spread topsoil and seed for stabilization. Um, the, this property is shaped like a, a backwards C or a U and um, Mr. Morrison's property or sorry, Ms. Dunn's property uh, surrounds on three sides uh, a lot at 1240. Their address is 1236. So this is just a little further north. And Mr. Morrison has created a um, rubble or stone access way that runs behind number 1240 or east of number 1240, which appears to be in the wetlands. But without the wetland flags, it's difficult to confirm that. So my recommendation is that that material be removed and that um, these two items, you know, if these two items can be done by the September 20th meeting, the commission uh, would be able to, would have enough information to act on the permit application. Um, we are, we're working with plans that were submitted 
in January of 2020 that show pretty much um, uh, a residential use on the south side where the house is and the commercial use for Mr. Morrison's tree and wood operation on the north side. Um, that north side included a building and a stormwater basin and uh, driveways and stuff like that to uh, accommodate the operation. Um, but it didn't include that access way behind number 1240. Uh, so I think that's a reasonable request. And if the uh, applicant uh, is, is okay with that, then I would, I would recommend that, that the commission make that, uh, you know, a, a requirement or, or a, you know, this is what needs to be done for these to move forward. And unfortunately, if it's not done, then the commission may have no, no choice but to deny the applications again. And I hope that's not the case. So, Andy, what do you, yes, got? What do you have? Um, Peter, you remember when you said that there's a possibility to change a site plan to accommodate that back road. Um, when we find out when Mr. Logan does his research and Mr. Um, TJ does his work, I was hoping to implement that um, additional um, drafting on the paperwork to show us that as part of the plan, because that access road does really, really help um, narrow down part of my project to be a lot more like time-wise uh, convenient and even not even so much convenient, more cheaper because instead of traveling around the property to access where I need to be two steps down, it, you know, because I have a lot of debris that I took on the property, I piled up in the back and I would like to clean it up to create a yard space. And in order to do so, I have to be on the north side. So the north side access is easier to get to from the backyard versus coming from the backyard all the way around to the street, creating a lot more damage. Uh, our, uh, I want to say track and dirt through the other side to the street versus going from the back of the property. And I'll be there versus like, I want to say 200 feet versus like 1500 feet going all the way around. <clears throat> So time-wise for me, you know, it narrows down a little bit of expense for me if I could access the back way. So it'll probably be less expense for me to change the map versus going the long way. Well, you can certainly modify your, your site plans, but I'm not sure you're going to be able to get them modified in time. That's what I was trying to, trying to get across with, with, you know, going forward with the plan as it is. Your plan had... I believe 4,500 square feet of wetland impact. And you probably have that much or more for that access road. So it's, you know, uh, the permits jump from the local level to the state level once you get above 5,000 square feet. So if you want to modify the plan, I have think- It's gonna go to the federal level now. Yeah, but I, no, but I think modifying the plan to include that back, um, you know, the, the access way, you're going to have to lose some filled wetlands elsewhere. And I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing on that because there's a lot of areas I see that we're never going to use. Um, we got 20 something acres. It wouldn't be a big deal to get rid of some to create that road. That's very important. In the long run, I will be saving a lot more money in fuel and man hours. Okay. Uh, that, that meeting is five weeks away. And I need to have a revised set of plans uh, in time for the to for me to review it and to get get it out to the commission. So it's really uh, um, two or three weeks from today. It, three, let's say three weeks from today, giving me two weeks before the meeting is when I would be Labor Day plans. What's that? Yeah. Three weeks from today is Labor Day. All right. Yeah. So the week before. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying, Andy, is, is we have a set of plans that are mostly complete. If you want to change them, then I have to go through the my full review and be able to give the commission a reasonable uh, um, set of recommendations. But if, uh, you know, if that's, uh, if you want to go that way, you will have to modify some other parts of the project, uh, you know, elsewhere. 
right. So maybe for now, what I'll do, I'll pull the material in other place. Um, once it's mapped out and I can identify where we are impacting the wetland, I could temporarily move that area out of there, the crushed rocks that I have there and use it on other part of the site until we could uh, get the updated information uh, at a later date. You would be coming in for a modification to the permit if that was the case. I mean, if you certainly have the right to modify the plans that were submitted a year and a half ago, if you want to do that, if you can, if you can do that, maybe that's the best way to go. But that's a, that's something that you're going to have to talk with your your surveyor and your engineer and with Mr. Logan for mitigation, you know, about to get their you know to get their input and figure out what what is the best you know, way forward. Well, in the meantime, Peter, my biggest concern is not to prolong this whole situation. So whatever it takes to get it pushed forward, and then we'll deal with the actual road situation uh, at the end. You know, if it's going to cost me more money in the end, time is money as well. So I, I need to think about all, dragging this along. It's almost two years, two plus years now. You know, we dealt with COVID a year. We're pushing way behind, and um, mm -hmm. I would have wanted to be, be done with this. Sure. You know, but, so I'm going to want to say we're going to push um, your way um, until we could, uh, you know, get the additional information to push forward the, road, the additional road. Um, Peter, did um, is, is the mirror stones still relevant? As a markers, uh, I had asked uh, Mr. Morrison to find or to to uh, reset the property corners that he shares with number twelve forty. Uh, those are important just to you know understand where the limits of the property are, but they also give for, you. How about for uh, the edge of development? I'm sorry. Say it again. For the edge of development. Now. It, I, we don't know exactly where the property line corners are in, that, in the field, and that's part of the problem. So if they're there, we need to find them. If they're not, we need they need to be. They need. No, to you're missing assessed. your point. You, my point is that you and I had a conversation about um, <clears throat> putting mirror stones in the uh, in the field so that you could tell where was the edge of development that he was allowed to go to. Yeah. Yeah, we did have that conversation. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood your question. I think having a physical marker in the field is a good idea. Yeah. But uh, that the limits of that development are not, you know, that would be something after the permit was approved and could be a condition of approval. Hey, you got to put these markers so right. we know where, we, where you are. That way, every we, time there's a question, Peter doesn't have to say, well, you got to get a surveyor. Whereas if you said a stone at the edge of a development, I agree. He, he can see it. You know. yeah. uh, Mr. Chair, through you and Peter and to Mr. Morrison, I think you need to get the um, get everything you need to get into us as soon as possible or to Peter so we can get this application hearing so we can get to the bottom of it. I know it's been a challenging site. There's been a few violations and we just want to make sure that our inland wetlands are, are, in, are, in, are in good operating shape and no one is affected. So please try our best so we can proceed with this application. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from the public? Nope. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Any comments from the public? Any comments from the commission? So is there a motion to table this to the September 20th meeting? I'd like to make a motion to table the public hearing. Well, is that how I want to do it? Ta tabling a public hearing? Yeah. All right. So I'd like to table the public hearing on the wetlands permit application on Andy Morrison, 1236 Blue Hills Kevin, Avenue. Kevin, sorry to interrupt. You should you should table the application and continue the public hearing. Ah, uh, all right. Correct. Sorry, Kevin. Okay, so table the application for the wetlands 
permit application of Andy Morrison, 1236 Blue Hills Avenue, lot 27A, map 236 for the subdivision of land with wetlands and watercourses and to construct a contractor's yard on or redone. And we will continue the public hearing. To September 20th. To September 20th. I'll second that. Second by Kevin Hussain. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. So, Mr. Morrison, we'll see you next month. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next application. Another public hearing? Yeah, we got two more to go. Whoa. Kevin right. Wilcox. No, no, no. I've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> Katie. Katie looks like she's willing to do it. <laughs> Let me try it out. Okay. Make go for it. <laughs> to open a public hearing for the wetlands map amendment application of Borghese Building and Engineering, 1601, Blue Hills Avenue, lots C1 and C1A, map 453, owners, New Mercies Apostolic Church, Inc. There's a second. Second. Second, second by Barry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Who's here for the applicant? Uh, it's Rob Blanchett with Borghese Building. How are you? We're representing the applicant um, for actually both public hearings. And I'll, I'll try and keep it brief because uh, <laughs> I guess everybody was a little surprised by the amount you had on here tonight. Doing okay. We got four of them done in an hour. Okay. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we've been that. here till midnight. <laughs> Okay, I promoted uh, uh, Jim McManus as well, who's the uh, soil scientist. So, all right, how uh, about um, Stephen Harvey? Got his hand up. Okay, I don't know. Does he want to come in? Let's see. I'm not sure who Mr. Harvey is. Let's find out. Yeah. He's muted. Uh, he's also one of the members of the church or board member. All right. Mr. Harvey, you're there. You're muted. He goes. <coughs> Are you there, Mr. Harvey? I see he's un he's unmuted. He's actually the pastor for uh, Destiny Church. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, here we go. Yes. Okay. I, I was unmuted. I don't know what was going on there. No picture, but you're unmuted. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to figure that one out now. <laughs> Click on video. Oh, there you are. Here I am. Welcome. Thank All righty. So, Mr. McManus, you're up. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, Jim McManus, uh, professional soil scientist, uh, JMM Wetland Consulting Services with offices in Newtown. Back in January of 2018, I delineated the wetlands on this project site. And, <clears throat> and back just a few weeks ago on August 4th of this year, I met with Peter to review the boundary that I delineated back a few years ago. Um, the majority, the overwhelming majority of the boundary is essentially off site, but adjacent to the property line. There's actually two flags that, act, that come onto the site, and that's wetland flag eight and nine. Uh, when I was out on the site with Peter, we did hang some flags because uh, refresh some numbers and we hung some flags that were sort of knocked down and such. So if anybody revisit visited the site in the last few weeks, they were at least able to see those. Um, <clears throat> the wetland boundary uh, uh, adjacent to the site kind of follows very abrupt. It's uh, it's Washbrook, but uh, it's a it's a man-made pond within Washbrook, and the boundary follows right along the top of the bank. 
with the exception of where this where the boundary actually extends on the site it's actually a drainage pipe there so the wetlands come up to the drainage pipe turn and come right back down following along the edge of the man-made pond within wash brook <coughs> mr blanchett do we have a, a plan that you can share on zoom i was trying to get it <laughs> i was trying to get it so i sh could share a screen um and the best i can do is this and i don't know let me see if i bring this a little closer it might be a little yeah at least uh no. can you see that a little bit better not really rob can you point to flags eight and nine eight and nine are right and well here i'll, I'll explain it this red line right here is the property line this orange line is the town's wetland map this blue line right here is the actual flagged in the field wetlands Oops. Sorry. Yeah, what, what you're doing doesn't help. So maybe Peter can pull up it and try to follow along. That's yeah. what I was trying to do, but I couldn't get it. Let could, me try can, again. Yeah, for some reason, I can't get it to share my screen. Peter, you can call it up on your screen first and then share after you've got it called up. Okay. I'll try that. Okay, I'm working on it, folks. Yeah, let me try it again in the meantime. Bob. Counterclockwise. Here we go. All right. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, all right, perfect. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit and uh, we'll get to the to the crux of the matter. Right. Oops, there we go. Sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Yep, got it, thank you. Uh, so Peter, I guess you're running the screen, right? Yeah. Can you point the flags eight and nine to give them a sense where that is? Mm. Here's, yeah, here's yeah. wetland flag 10. 10. And there's nine here's, and eight. Here's nine right there. Right. And eight. eight. And then seven goes down. Right. And then and six then, goes across. Right. So the wetland, the flag wetlands line is this kind of thin line with the two dots. And, and, and as you, yeah. Go ahead, John. Uh, yep. Yeah. And <clears throat> that boundary, you see wetland flag two in the in the far left-hand side of the page. It's really falling along the edge of the man-made pond within Washbrook. And I said before, it makes a lot more sense now, exception of flags eight and nine, which it goes up and grabs a, a drainage pipe. Uh, and then it turns and goes back down, falling along an abrupt boundary along the, actually it's a forested and shrubby edge to the man-made pond. Uh, and that's and uh, that's really it. Uh, more the majority of the so well, all of the soils in the uplands are disturbed, and the uh, majority of the soils in the wetland part that's adjacent to the property boundaries were also disturbed. Any undisturbed soils you would fall under the wall pole, which is an outwash or a glacial outwash sort of uh, sand and gravel sort of soil. And then as you get further in closer to Wash Brook, you're gonna find some floodplain soils, but those are all off site. So that's pretty much it. It's uh, a couple flags that actually hit the boundary. It's, it's abrupt uh, along a disturbed edge with a dead shrub and forested boundary along that wetland line. And uh, I think I told you I went out with Peter on October, uh, August 4th of this year to go over this. Uh, that's it for me now. There are, uh, I'm not sure if you have my January 30th, 2018 soils report. 
There are some photographs. There's a figure showing uh, just an approximate location of where I thought the wetlands were. And then there's some photographs. Uh, for instance, photo three shows the drainage pipe. Uh, photo one shows actually wetland flag six. <coughs> happens to be that one. And then there's some other stuff that's kind of offsite and then the soils map. So that's all I have for this boundary amendment. The the commission uh, received, uh, or we received your report and I sent it to the commission, but it's not stapled with the agenda package. It's a separate, uh, separate report. It would be called the on-site soil investigation report by me. It's kind of a uh, boilerplate fill-in fill -in kind of report. It's not going to be a letter report. Fill in the blanks kind of thing. So if you're, looking, uh, if you're looking through your files. Yes, we have it. Okay. Here. What, Joy? John Panic here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I agree with what Mr. Uh, McManus uh, stated. Um, I went out and looked on the uh, for the wetland flags. Um, and uh, I, I, it was hard for me to find it, I have to admit. So I asked him to come out to, to help me find these flags. And, and I'm gonna zoom in here again, uh, because the, uh, um, the, uh, the area of flagged wetlands on the property are between wetland flag nine and wetland flag eight. And they total about 16 square feet. I think I estimated 18. So our wetland, uh, official wetland map line is this, this line here. And the official wetlands map shows 987.4 square feet. But indeed, in fact, there are only 16.2 uh, square feet. So I met with Mr. Uh, McManus. We found remnants uh, uh, of some of these flags and we're, able to re, re essentially reestablish, I think we did 10 through seven or 10 through eight. 10 to five, yep, ten, we actually went down to five. We did, okay. Yeah. So uh, the, you know, the outcome of this is that there are wetlands on the site, but only 16.2 square feet. Uh, I think the flagging was, was accurate uh, and that, uh, um, you know, I recommending that the commission approve uh, the, uh, the application with my three usual conditions. You want me to try to share that report? Uh, you can. I mean, the, the oh, biggest I'm, thing. I'm asking the commission. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Um, no, I'm good. Does anybody okay. else want to see it? No, I need it. I'm good. All right. Um, any questions from the public? <coughs> Any questions from the commission? Um, the other question I have, what is, what is that pond behind the, the site? It was a man-made uh, excavated pond within Wash Brook. I'm not sure when it was done. I'm sure it was done during all of the tobacco farming. I'm guessing they used that pond for irrigation. Back in the day, yep. Was this church previously used by somebody else? This Another church day? used to used to be in Windsor. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was, it was a Catholic church when it was moved from Windsor in 1935. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Any other any questions? Peter, you're good? I'm good. All right. Uh, no comments from the public, no comments from the commission. Uh, let's close the public hearing. All right, I move that we close the public hearing on the wetlands map amendment application of Borghese Building and Engineering, 1601 Blue Hills yeah. Avenue, lot C1 and C1A map 453 owners, New Mercies Apostolic Church, Inc. 
All right, is there a second? Second. Second by Barry. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Um, is there a motion to approve the application? <laughs> so, come on, come on, Katie. So move. <laughs> uh, made by Kevin Hussein. Okay, got to be quick, Katie. Seconded. Second by Kevin Wilcox. Shorthand. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? It's unanimous. All right. All right. So, who's here for the applicant? Uh, Rob Blanchett with Borghese Building. Wait, wait, wait. Do we need to we need to open the next one, don't we? Um, yes. I'm sorry. It's a public hearing on actual the development. Right. Right. I'm sorry. So, did we approve the application for the boundary change? Yes, we closed the public yep. hearing and voted to approve the application. Now we have to the open a new public hearing. Okay. I don't recall. Vo what, vote what are you drinking, close? Barry? Right now, and <laughs> yeah, we we voted. I don't recall voting to approve it. No, I think we just uh, voted to just vote to close the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. We need a motion to open the public hearing for the map. Of, uh, no, we need a the motion. permit. No, no, no. Hold it. Stop. Stop, Alan. Kevin Hussein said that so moved. he he was the one who was doing Proving the, the amendment to the wetland right approving for for approving the permit i seconded and then we just Correct. voted on it Correct. Well, that was a vote to close the public hearing no we have no, no. already done that i, I think now, we should, now, all now right whatever item, now we're going to move to item number six yeah the film will, the film will show later yep. the wetlands boundary was approved Mr. Right. Wilcox is right. He got it. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He keeps up. He keeps me up right. making these motions. He's going to be chairman soon. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so move. Kevin, you're confused. I'm kidding. Me. I'm kidding. <laughs> For the public, we have two Kevins, which makes it worse. So, yeah, not even that, that, <laughs> that doesn't help matters. One, one of us can drop out. <laughs> no, no. We need you to make motions. <laughs> All right. Let's, so let's have like one to, to open the next public hearing. I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing for the wetlands permit application of Bordesi Building and Engineering, 1601 Blue Hills Avenue, lot C1 and C1A, map 453, owners, New Mercies Apostolic Church. Uh, to construct an addition to the existing church. Okay. Anybody like to second that? Yeah. Second by Joy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying is unanimous. Public hearing is open. Okay. Now, who's here for the applicant? Okay. Uh, Rob Blanchett with Borghese Building. Right. Um, and what I'm going to try, I'm going to try and do the screen again, see if it'll come up this time. Hold on one second. Uh, it's not coming up. I don't think. Well, let me see. All right, let me. I'm going to try as well. Yeah. For some reason, it's not. It won't come up. I mean, this is a combined set that I put together, and they're not in order. So I apologize for that. Yeah, I mean, SP1 would be the one ideally if we could get that to come up. Yep, hang on, let me get to full picture. Yeah, I don't know why it won't it won't click on and come up. Okay, here's you're SP. Gonna have to, you're gonna have to change which, which window is being shared on your screen. What do you mean? And now you're sharing your file explorer. So you gotta change that, that you're sharing. You have to close that, unshare that one and then reshare. The other one. Is that better? There we go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Can you make it a little bigger? I can zoom in uh, or we can go to the SP2, which is a 20 scale instead of 30 scale. Does that help? Yeah, that one's a little bit better. Yeah, it's better. 
Okay. Um, so as you can see, what we're looking at doing is we're looking at adding on to the existing church um, approximately 9,000 square feet. The existing church is a very small building compared to this. I mean, 9,000 square feet isn't a big building, but right there is where the existing church is. And what we're doing is building the addition out into the existing parking area. And you can kind of see in a light line, the outline of the existing parking area. And then in turn to pick up the additional parking required for this, we're moving to, for lack of a better word, to the right side of the page there. Um, all the drainage that's on the site now, all kind of flows towards the existing church and then down towards that existing outlet, uh, which is where the wetlands meet up with that. Now, we're going to basically leave that same flow with the proposed water and that's all going to be collected go through um, an oil water treatment system and then into the detention basin and then that detention basin is going to empty out basically to the same spot where the existing outlet is now um, so there again what we're going to do is uh, create a better riprap system there the one that comes out of that pipe now is really limited. It's just kind of right at the end of the pipe. So this one will um, create a much better area for the outlet. Um, with the drainage calculations that we have, um, we do have a zero increase runoff for the two, 10, 25, 50, and 100 year storms. Um, and I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. The, the septic system, because surprisingly enough, there is, no, um, there is no sanitary sewer out there. So the existing building is on a well, or I mean on a septic system. This one, again, will also be on a septic system. Uh, we did have the perk test done. The material is, you couldn't get any better material that's out there. Um, and that system has been designed and that's going to be in the upper right hand corner well away from the wetlands area. Um, we did receive um, a memo from Peter with um, some things that notes that he wants us to add to the drawings and some other things as far as um, notes and some improvements on the on the slopes and some additional landscaping that wants to be done. So there again, I mean, we really don't have any issues um, with what you're asking us to do. Um, and that pretty much sums it up about what we did. I mean, like we said, there's very little wetlands on the, on the site. So it wasn't really hard to uh, stay out of the wetlands. Um, and the only thing that we're gonna do, which is in the wetlands in that little 16 square foot area now is the outlet structure. And ours is gonna remain in the same spot. So you can see it actually comes out near um, wetland flag uh, right now, uh, wetland flag eight, that's all gonna be removed. And then that new um, outlet stone area will be between eight and nine. So it will encompass the 16 square foot of wetlands. It will. It will not. Uh, oh, you, you say the riprap will? Yeah, the the red. Yeah, the only thing that's going to be in that area is going to be riprap, which is riprap is in that same area right now. Okay. But it'll just be an improved system of riprap, a larger area to kind of dissipate that flow. Okay, um, I looked at uh, I looked at this uh, site in detail, and normally we get a lot of uh, a lot of questions about wetland impacts, etc. Um, I think you could probably do the riprap down here without impacting the wetlands at all, but that's that's a, a minor thing um, for sixteen square feet of wetlands down here. I don't consider that a significant impact to the wetlands. Um, the, uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Blanchett mentioned, whoops, it was the wrong click. Uh, the existing building is very small. It's only this little rectangle here. I'm not sure how many square feet that is, 
but it's a very small little church. The, the connecting corridor is almost as big as the existing church. So the new building is going to be, you know, I don't know, five times as big as the existing one. And uh, our uh, regulations say, you know, you're going to have, uh, you, you need a permit to work within 200 feet of the water course, which is this line. And or 100 feet from the flag wetlands, which is this line. Um, they, you didn't talk about the erosion control, but this line here is, is uh, silt fence. Uh, and I'm asking for, um, you know, some uh, slope stabilization, uh, some other um, uh, technical uh, revisions, uh, including um, showing, uh, um, you know, where uh, soil storage might be, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, the project is going to, to disturb quite a bit of soils. And I'm not sure if we got an idea or if it's on this, this plan, what the, uh, what the scope of the excavation and the fill is. I believe there's more material coming out than there is going back in. Uh, and so the, permit application is for the regulated activities within these upland review areas. So the this part of the parking lot, this end of the of the stormwater basin and the septic system are not in the upland review area, but the entire building is as well as let's say half the parking and most of the stormwater pond are in those upland review areas. Um, one of my recommendations uh, in the in the staff report, but I, I was reviewing it today and I see it wasn't included in the recommended conditions of approval was to replant the edge right here where they're gonna be closest to the pond. This dark line out here is the edge of the pond and they're proposing to cut, I believe all of the vegetation uh, along this area where I'm indicating now. And my recommendation is that those uh, that this area be replanted with trees or shrubs to uh, to enhance the you know the existing wetlands and and as a uh, um, you know an additional uh, environmental um, protection. Uh, but again, I see that I didn't include it in the conditions of approval. Uh, Mr. Blanchett indicated that they were okay with that, um, and so it you know maybe doesn't need to be a condition of approval, but. That's the only other thing that I was, you know, that I had in mind for this. Um, and, you know, he, they do show uh, a uh, stormwater quality um, basin here or structure here. So the runoff is going to run to these catch basins into this thing and then out over here. So this isn't, this discharge isn't a new discharge it is an 18 inch discharge pipe there. So the, uh, the flows coming out of there are not very large, but I believe the, the size of the pipe was necessary for the volume, uh, or I'm sorry, it was necessary to handle the volume at a pretty flat slope. I think these are all less than 1% slopes. So uh, I think it's a reasonable um, application. I do have, um, a bunch of conditions of approval, and uh, some of them are are pretty much uh, boilerplate stuff that I always ask for. But in this case, where uh, project includes 2.4 acres of disturbance, and I'm asking for a $3,000 bond to be posted prior to construction. Um, and I think uh, in this case, I am also asking. Uh, among other things, for the uh, um, applicant to uh, engage and pay for an independent consultant to do uh, weekly inspections uh, during the during the project. Um, I don't really have an idea of how long the project will take, but maybe Mr. Blanchett could could fill us in on that uh, timing wise. Do you guys have an idea of how long the project is estimated to take? Uh, I mean, one of the things that's kind of coming into play here is, you know, in the middle of summer, we're already thinking about winter. So it's it's really going to depend how much work we can get done through the winter 
and that's going to be dependent on the weather. Um, but we do hope to have the foundations in the steel up. Um, I mean, if the ground's frozen, it's, it's really not worth, um, you know, trying to do a lot of excavation. So it's really going to be dependent on that, but we should be able to have the steel up through the winter and, and keep on going on that. Um, what we don't want to do if it gets incredibly cold is to be trying to tent the whole building in order to, to put up masonry and temporary heat. So that would drag it out a little. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, you're probably looking at eight or nine months, um, but it's all going to be dependent on what happens in the winter. Okay. W one of my conditions, number 11, is that the stormwater basin be constructed first mm -hmm. and, and stabilized. So that would be your first construction item, hopefully by um, before it gets too cold to plant. Yeah. Grass. Yep. Is, is that is that acceptable as well? That's acceptable. Okay. I mean, typically that's what we try to do anyways, is to get that being one of the first things in. Right. You want to get it excavated and green so that you, it can accept water during construction too. Yes. You want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that that's condition number 11. That's That one is fairly boilerplate, but uh, I'm not going to go through all 15 of them unless the commission has any questions. The applicant has indicated that he's okay with those. Uh, 15, as well as planting some trees and shrubs along the, what do we have? The southwesterly part of the project, I guess. Yes. Here. Yeah, and you had that note on item 30 to us. So yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, okay. He's referring to uh, technical revisions that I that I sent to him, uh, I think on Thursday or Friday, uh, which uh, is pretty standard. We, we often ask for, um, uh, you know, specific technical revisions to the, to the submitted plans. And when those revisions are made, and if any revisions are uh, occur because of the commission's uh, vote tonight, then uh, those would also be incorporated into final set of plans, as well as in the future, you know, going down the line to planning and zoning. Um, so uh, that's, I think, pretty much what I have. Uh, I don't think anybody mentioned this, but the, they're proposing to move the driveway over. It's not in the Upland Review area, so it doesn't really come into play for this commission, but I wanted just to point that out, that it's going to shift from there to here. Thanks, Peter. I was going to ask about that. Okay, that'll that's all. That'll be a state highway problem. Not problem, but application. Yes. Yeah, to the DOT for the yep. driveway change. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, I mean, the good thing about that road is it's it's so straight. You have a thousand foot plus um, side like this vision <laughs> line down. And, yeah. and there is a median up here, but it's not broken. No, you, not at all. You have to go down to Day Hill Road and turn around and come back. Yeah, and from that driveway, you can actually see all the way down to the intersection at Day Hill Road. Okay. Right. Uh, all right. Uh, wetlands um any questions from the public any questions from the commission None. yeah i actually um Kevin is saying? yeah about the the approved septic system location uh, i know it's um about the um wetlands review area, but obviously, Peter, I'm sure um, Jonathan's group has reviewed that for consistency with um, any um, failures or anything coming back into the um, groundwater and or the wetlands, correct? Uh, actually, it gets reviewed by the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District, and they have been working with Borghese, with Mr. Blanchett, to uh, design this thing so that it's properly uh, properly uh, sized and, and, and will function. Mr. Blanchett mentioned that the soils up here are real good. This part of Bloomfield has sandy soils, so they, they have good absorption, sometimes too much absorption. But in this case, um, they are, they're working hand in hand with the, with the health district to make sure that the septic system is done correctly. And 
it's going to have to be a pump system. So it's going to come out of the building to this pump chamber here and, and then pumped up to the, to the leaching fields in this area. Yeah, we do, we do have approval already from the health department. All right, because I probably want to, Peter, you probably want to include that in the report because indeed if something happens with that pump, you know, and there is any incidents there, it will be in our upland review area and just a few feet away from, you know, the wetlands delineation lines, I guess. So maybe we just want to include that report as part of the submission as a record. Uh, yeah, the, the septic system plan will be part of the final set, if that's what you're asking me. Correct. But this line here is 200 feet from the water course. Oh, that's the 200 foot line. Okay. The right. Water yeah, the wa water course is way down here. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the commission? Any comments from the public? Any comments from the commission? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Close second. The, what motion? Uh, motion made by Katie, seconded by Barry. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, it's unanimous. Now, do we want to act upon this application? I'll make a well, motion. We have to make a motion and then we can discuss it. Yes, we, it, this has to be a little more than make a motion. You got to include the map and staff comments and so forth. Yeah, we'll make a motion to. Um approve the application, the wetland permits application for Borghese Building and Engineering, 1601 Blue Hills Avenue, lots C1 and C1A, map 453, owners, the New Mercies Apostolic Church, Inc., to construct an additional uh, uh, existing church. I'm sorry, to construct an addition to the existing church. And would map uh, revised site plan revised um, August 9, 2021. Is that correct, Peter? Yes. The, yes. Um, the conditions as outlined um, in Peter's in the wetlands agent's report, in addition to adding the um, vegetation and the buffer, the vegetative buffer around the, what was the area here? The proposed. Um, South, south and west parts. The south, is it that's, that's what it was, right? The southwest corner? Yeah, mm -hmm. southwest corner where that, um, trying to find a marker here, where the, near the rear setback. Okay. So that would be in addition to your conditions, correct? To my three, uh, yeah. or to my 15, pardon me. Okay. Right. Yep. Is there anything else, I think? Um, what's Kevin? the map, map date? Is it 8621? Is that the most current map? August 9th, 2021. I think it was August 9th. 9th. 8 9. 8 9. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joy. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Okay. Moving right along. Item number seven, 38 Pheasant Chase Road, notice of violations, regulated activity, notice of violation, reg regulated activities without a permit. So who is here for this? I have promoted Joshua and Melody Gaval. Right. Now this is not a public hearing, so there's no public comments or questions. Right. So uh, the, um, the back of your agenda package, you'll see uh, a notice of violation dated August 10th. Um, a uh, uh, inspection report uh, dated August 6th, 
my letter of uh, notice, uh, warning letter dated July 9th, and an inspection report from June 25. Um, I didn't include a staff report in this, in this particular case um, because the commission really only has to decide if they wanna uphold this notice of violation or uh, rescind it. So um, the history is that I received some complaints from neighbors um, uh, of this property, uh, neighbors to the north. And uh, I, after investigating, I found that there had been some tree clearing um, within wetlands and watercourses and at the edge of um, Mead Pond, which is on the property. And the, uh, uh, f at the follow-up inspection, uh, well, let me back up. Um, I, I met with the property owner, Mr. Joshua Gaval, and we had a, a pretty long discussion about why uh, he needed or should have had a wetlands permit um, uh, or at least a jurisdictional ruling from the commission that he didn't need a permit uh, for clearing these upland review areas as well as the um, um, some areas that are wetlands and water courses. Um, the commission should have in their package, and I can bring it up if you want me to, um, a GIS plot that does not have an aerial photo in the background. And it shows um, uh, the site uh, or, or the westerly part of the site. And it shows uh, the areas, estimated areas of, of um, the disturbance that I, that I noted in my first inspection. Uh, I followed uh, um, Mr. Gaval uh, around the property and we looked at various areas and he asked me if the trees that were behind his house that were to the west of the house um, that he was worried about falling on the house would, uh, you know, if he needed a wetlands permit to take down those houses, uh, sorry, those trees. And my response was that if the trees are in danger of falling down, um, or you're worried about them falling down, then that's a legitimate reason to want to try to hey, remove hey, them. Peter, you mean falling and hitting the house? Right, okay. exactly. Okay. So, uh, and that he and that he wouldn't need a wetlands permit to to do though to to remove those trees. Uh, he also asked me about whether the he needed a permit to pave the driveway. There's an existing driveway there that's part paved and part um, black, uh, part gravel. So I said, I wasn't sure if that was in the Upland Review area, but as it turns out, all but the far Southwest corner of the site is either wetlands water courses or in the Upland Review area. Um, at my follow-up inspection, we walked around and uh, behind the house, the, um, uh, not just the trees that were immediately behind the house, but all of the trees in that southwest corner estimated about 1.3 acres of forest were, were uh, clear cut and the area was graded to create a, uh, a terrace uh, rather than a gentle slope or moderate slope that existed before. Um, the parts of the tree clearing and the parts of the grading closest to the house are in the 200 foot upland review area. So I told Mr. Gaval that he had another violation for doing that work without a permit. And that's when I sent the notice of violation uh, to, to him. Uh, and now here we are at the, at the meeting. Um, I did receive a written testimony from Miss Melody uh, Gaval. This uh, I got them this morning, but they were sent to me Sunday, uh, yesterday after seven o'clock. And um, the uh, uh, um, I don't have the um, uh, ability to share that with you guys in in real time. Um, but uh, perhaps Miss Gaval would like to. Uh, Re reiterate that. If not, we can, you know, I'll be happy to, to read it to you um, as because it's part of the motion, uh, part of the meeting, um, record of the meeting. 
Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Good. You have the floor. Oh, thank you. So, um, and Joshua, Ga Joshua Gavel is here as well. Um, so, so I'm taking it the, the committee didn't get the testimony, the written testimony, because I think she sent it, but it went to the wrong email. So she forwarded the email um, right after seven. But I no, guess I, I got it, but I wasn't able to share it with the commission before okay. before the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I think she will read it. Okay, so I can read that over. I, have, I don't have a problem with that. So good evening to the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. My name is Melody Gval, resident of Zero Gamarden slash 30 Pheasant Chase. My husband, Joshua Gaval and I, who have been recently married, have just become residents of Bloomfield. We moved to the Bloomfield area from different states. I'm from New York and my husband is from Massachusetts and Connecticut was your happy medium. We're looking forward to raising our glowing family and residing in the town of Bloomfield for many years to come. Um, after we purchased the house this past year, we found there was a huge tick infestation. Anytime my husband and I were to go around the house, we would have ticks leaching onto our body. If a delivery service were to drop off a box and I were to bring it inside, there would be ticks on my body. It has come to the point where the ticks would find a way inside our house if we were to open the front door or garage doors. Every family member of ours who's walked around the property, including our nieces and nephews under the age of five, have been bit by a tick. One of my three-year-old nieces had a tick on her neck after visiting, and she had to go to urgent care to pull the tick's mouth out because it was stuck after the body was pulled. I plan to raise a family here, and if issued or arise during pregnancy, it could harm my growing fetus. If a tick bites and is a carrier Lyme disease, it could put serious health complications on a person. I care about the well-being of my family and the well-being of my loved ones. We have collected these ticks and documented them just to know what species they are because some carry Lyme disease and other serious illnesses. Amongst the ones we collected were deer ticks. Soon after that, we had the house sprayed from two different companies multiple times in hopes to get rid of the ticks and kill them, and the ticks have still continued to thrive and live. Everyone told us that the only way to get rid of the tick infestation was to remove the trees away from the house because they provide shade for the ticks to live and thrive in. We were informed by the CDC that ticks do not like to live in direct sunlight. When the spraying didn't work to kill the ticks, we had no choice but to call and meet with numerous tree contractors to push the trees away so we could tackle the tick infestation on our property. This wasn't our first choice because of the financial expense to remove the trees, but it was our last resort because we couldn't risk our health and our loved one's health. After calling and meeting with three different professional tree contractors, we decided to go with one of the companies. Shortly after we saw a door tag from Mr. Peter, and I'm sorry if I uh, pronounced your last name wrong, Castaldi of Bloomfield with a phone number. We set a meeting with him to come look at the work done on June 25th, a few days after seeing his card. He told my husband that we were not allowed to take the trees down within the wetlands perimeters and that we would have to pull a permit. We didn't know that we needed to pull a permit, otherwise we would have consulted with the town of Bloomfield. None of the professional tree contractors we met with told us that we needed to pull a permit with the town of Bloomfield or go through a special commission. They were all eager to start the job as soon as possible and get paid quickly upon completion. When my husband spoke with Mr. Castaldi about the trees, he told him he needed to stabilize by doing two things. One was putting seed down and the other was removing the tree trunks that were left there. Right after the meeting, we put down seed and removed the tree trunks because the health and well-being of our pond is a top priority after our health. We even took it one step further and we set up a silt tents, which was never required to do so or told to us by Mr. Castaldi. From today, grass has grown fully in both the areas next to our house and in the furthest area south side. Seeds were also put down and the chips from the trees were also placed. We have had 10 to 12 aggressive rainstorms in July, the wettest month of the whole decade, and we had no issues arise from including runoff. And it appears that since no issues have come to light, especially during the wettest month, that the land appears stabilized. During the same meeting on June 25th, my husband had Mr., uh, many questions for Mr. Castaldi. Mr. Castaldi had the map on him and showed my husband all the waterways. He said the closest river was around the gate of the front entrance of the driveway. 
Joshua brought him to the walkway because we want to do new paving to the front door. And Mr. Castaldi said he would have to get back to us on the paving and that it might not be on the edge of the 200 feet setback for a wetlands violation. After that, my husband brought him to the back rear of the house to show him the trees hanging over the house. Joshua informed him that no more cutting will be done around the pond, but the rear trees of the house was our intention to take down because they were massively tall trees that were all hanging over the house. All our bedrooms, including children's bedrooms, are in the back rear of the house. Besides being a tick issue, my main concern as well was that the trees could fall down on us. A few years ago, I had a childhood friend who had a massive tree hanging over her house that fell on top of her room when she was sleeping. She was pinned to the bed by a 5,000 pound tree, severely injuring her. Her name is Stephanie Epstein. And since this incident happened, this has been a deep rooted fear of mine. Mr. Castaldi had to go to his next meeting, but he told my husband that the rear of the house is acceptable to cut. It's not a violation because it is no further than 200 feet in his estimate. He gave Joshua the okay for the rear of the house, but not the paving to the front door until he gets back to him, because that might be close to the wetlands region. Our issue and worry were that the trees could fall down on the house, and because we got the okay to do the job, we started right after June 25th. Being that there was no violation within the 200 feet of wetlands and we got the okay, we moved forward. During the process, we wanted to address a separate issue and we leveled part of the lands because we had an issue with water in our rear basement because the land is significantly higher in the rear of the house. To combat this issue, we had set up a berm. We evenly pitched the land on one side successfully, eliminating the water issue inside the basement. We completed the rear of the house and we were totally done besides putting down top soil and seed. We wanted to wait until August since we heard that that was the best month to seed. During this time, when this was all completed, we received a letter in the mail on July 9th, which was out of the blue for us since my husband wasn't notified that he would be receiving anything from the wetland committee in the mail. We had our follow-up meeting on August 6th to show um, Mr. Casildi the st stabilization that was requested of us. During this meeting, he told us the front slash south side is stabilized. He saw the rear of our house as well with grass seed already put down and told us we violated again. This surprised us that he told us we violated and should not, should not have done it without a permit considering that in person on the June 25th meeting, he told my husband that the rear was not within the 200 feet of wetlands and the only thing in question was redoing the pavement leading to the front door on the side of the house. Currently, the whole top grass is coming out and the silt fence was added as well. We attach pictures of both areas to show the updated stabilization via email. Both Joshua and I are writing to you today because we were unaware that there needed to be permits pulled to remove trees within wetlands, considering professional tree companies did not tell us. We feel that the tree company should be held liable since they are licensed and this is their field of work, especially to first time home buyers and new residents of the area. We feel they misled us because they knew they could take advantage of us and get away with it. The house has had numerous health and safety issues that we needed to address so that we could be able to live in our home without feeling like our health and well being is at risk daily. We were told by the previous owner's estate that he passed away at the age of 95 and he did very minimal upkeep the last decade of his life because of his old age. We weren't notified of committees, permits, and regulations. Otherwise, we would have spoken to the board about our tree concerns and all the issues the trees bring. Now that I'm aware of this, I just wanted to point out that even though wetlands are a concern for the committee, my concern was that I just wanted to feel safe living in my home and not be worried about ticks, Lyme disease, other diseases, and the possibility of massive trees that were overhanging falling down on us. This process has not been easy for easy for either of us and has been a huge financial burden on us. I was laid off during the pandemic and we are living off a single income. I hope the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission can understand what my husband and I went through during this time and the steps we had to take to be safe in our home. Thank you for listening. Okay. Um, Peter, um, I guess, I guess I'll be the bad guy here. And um, thank you for your comments. But as far as the wetlands is concerned, you 
you encroached on areas where you shouldn't have been without permits. And to rectify that, you need, I, I, I would like to see you replant trees um, where you remove them. I would like to see the, um, I guess the soil that you brought in concerns me on where you put it and how it was placed. Um, that may have to be removed. Um, I'm concerned about how the cutting of the trees affected the habitat of that area. Um, and I, I, I would want you to do a habitat study of that area. Um, so, and all this has to be submitted to the commission for approval. Did I miss anything, Peter? Uh, well, I I was going to uh, I was going to say that um, I did receive the the email uh, the the report that was just given, along with uh, photographs of the site that show the new areas uh, planted that are they're starting to come up green. Um, I previously noted, and it's in my second report that the stabilization and the removal of the of the tree trunks in the in the first area that I saw uh, was done that that was done um, and and if I could I'd like to share this share a screen um, the only the only uh, quibble that I have with what was said in uh, said by Mrs. Gaval is that uh, when uh, at least my recollection of the discussion about trees behind or west of the house was for only those trees that were in danger of of falling on the house. So I I prepared the map that I just brought up and I highlighted the areas in red where I found um, the uh, uh, the original areas that were that were noted where tree clearing had been done. Uh, right in here and right along the south side of the pond. So uh, that's part in wetlands and part in the uplands. Uh, but um, the uh, the limit of the upland review area uh, for this whole property uh, is this line here, this purple line. And this triangle up here is the only area of the site that's not within 200 feet of the wetlands or water courses. And you can see there's a water course coming in here. There's a, a bigger water course coming down here. Here's a small one, here's a small one. This is Mead Pond, it's about an acre and a half. Uh, and uh, the green is the wetlands, the blue are water courses. Um, and this property has a, has, a, has a driveway in from West Hartford. But all of the land I believe is in the town of Bluefield. So on the, on my second visit, this is this triangle up here is the area that was additionally cleared and graded. So this corner and this corner are in the 200 foot upland review area, 200 feet from this water course, 200 feet from this water course. So my uh, initial recommendations for for um, mitigation were to stabilize the area, which they did, uh, uh, and take the take the uh, um, the tree trunks that were here, take take them away, uh, away from the edge of the pond. And uh, at that initial meeting, uh, Mr. Gaval talked about having, uh, or maybe it was a second meeting. I'm not sure. He was having a landscape architect come up with a plan for replanting, but I haven't seen that plan yet. So uh, the commission has to decide whether to um, whether to uh, uphold the notice of violation or rescind it, and then we can we can go on. Uh, well, when you say go on, what do you mean by go on? Well, if you if you uphold the notice of violation, then the, the replanting as recommended would have to be submitted for approval. Uh, and I've given uh, or sent uh, the Gavaz an application form 
uh, and I think they should submit a after the fact permit for the work that was done here and here and up in here uh, and some kind of a restoration, particularly along this part of Mead Pond. I think that's that's the most important part for me. Do we know what we're doing dealing with for habitat? I mean, well, the the except for this corner now and around the house, this whole site is wooded wet, wooded uplands and wetlands. Um, the MDC reservoir pond is just up up here, right? Just off site, uh, and so and here's the here's the south end of uh, Balbray up here. Um, there's a uh, uh, Miss Gaval mentioned that. The town records indicate that this is zero Gilmartin Road, but the mailing address is 38 Pheasant Chase in West Hartford. So uh, the, um, uh, the habitat that was here is mostly, I would say, mostly associated with, with the pond. There and it's a man-made pond. There's a dam. There is also a heavy uh, bear population because they wander into Balbray from this area. Oh yeah, they probably wander right up and down this right of way right, down right, to uh, right. Mountain Road. Yeah, there's a heavy black bear uh, yep. population. But I mean, do they feed into the, do they drink water from that pond, from Mead Pond? I'm sure they do, or from one of these streams. Is this, this uh, stream coming in from this end is the overflow uh, from the, water treatment plant. This is not treated water. This is raw water that they're not treating. And so this pond has uh, um, almost, I would say, almost continuous flow in. So it's a cold pond, I'm guessing, for swimming. But uh, the area around it, like I said, is, is mostly mature woods. Again, except for these areas outlined in red now. Yeah. yeah you know, I know on the commission we've discussed this a number of times where, you know, homeowners just clear cut woods without regard to wetlands or, or even, you know, thinking about it or to the habitat that feed on the wetlands. And I, I'm really annoyed. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that. I don't know how y'all feel, but. Well, I'm a resident of Gilmartin Road, right. well, the neighborhood. I'm at number 25. And before the Gavals moved um, to zero, for the last couple of years, we've, heard, we've only been here four years. But for the last couple, we know that some, some new folks have moved in across the brook on the West Hartford side. And we've heard a lot of tree work being done, a lot of removal. And we know that some of the trees on the Bloomfield side have been removed. And we scratched our heads and wondered, you know, why folks were doing so much clear cutting. Did they have permits? Being on wetlands, I wondered why those projects didn't come up on agendas for permits. Mm -hmm. I also wonder why licensed landscapers or tree cutting um, companies wouldn't inform a, a, a new resident or a new homeowner. So, you know, I, I scratch my head too, um, but I can also see, and I, I read it in the news too, you know, the concerns for um, the tick infestations, it's serious. And, um, you know, yeah. there be a balance too. But but ticks have an actual predators have you know frogs birds um, chickens right. I know people that buy chickens and have them walking around their yard so they can eat the ticks um, you don't have to yeah. clear cut trees you know, no I know and it and it's very mature are, forest yeah and I believe the ticks are a sign of the wildlife that's in the area well so could could I could I sure. jump in on this conversation about ticks. Yeah. I, I know a little something about ticks since I am a horticulturalist and I've been working outdoors for the last 37 years. I understand the problem with ticks. 
And unfortunately, they were they received poor information about ticks. And the people to contact would be uh, like the state agricultural experiment station. There's one in Windsor, there's one in New Haven. And yeah. they would be the scientists that could tell you exactly what you know, need to know about either controlling ticks, living with ticks, which ones to be more concerned with. And ticks are arachnids, okay? They're cousins of spiders and scorpions. They are cool season creatures. So that if you have a warm up in January, you can expect as you walk around to pick up ticks. At the same time, their main feeding time would be they march through early June. Once you get into the heat of summer and especially like July, they hide. In fact, I've actually seen them say in the middle of June, uh, hiding out on foundations where it's cool in the shade uh, by, by the hundreds. Uh, and if you really wanna control ticks, even though it's a great idea because of your own health, or maybe say the health of the environment, to hire people who claim to do friendly controls or environmental controls or organic control, if, if their products aren't killing other things, they're not gonna take out the ticks. So if you really wanna chemically control ticks, one, it's a bad idea because you also get rid of their predators and you're also killing other things that you don't need to. Uh, and I do like what Alan said, get chickens because chickens eat an awful lot of ticks and you benefit from getting eggs. Don't have roosters. And uh, the other thing is just because you have trees and you have shade, that does not necessarily increase the time of the year that they would be active in feeding. Uh, and like Katie, even though I'm not up on Gilmartin Road, I'm not even a quarter mile, maybe a half mile from this location, I also have ticks. And every day I have to be concerned about whether I have ticks on me. It's a matter, unfortunately, of life and you just have to be vigilant. And you also need to understand if you are being, if you are bitten by a tick, about the last thing you wanna do is grab a pair of tweezers and pull it out because you then do two things. You push, the saliva and bodily fluids of the tick into you, which also contain all the either viruses or mycoplasmas or whatever the different organelles that, that cause our serious diseases, that gets pushed into us. The other thing you do is you actually pull the body and separate it from the head and the head remains and you can get a secondary infection that way. Easiest way to get rid of them if they are biting you is to either dab them with a, a Q-tip with uh, hydrogen peroxide or put um, oil on the area and they start to suffocate and they back out. Or you can apply some sort of heat, take your pick as to how you wanna do that without singeing yourself. Uh, and they don't like heat because they're a cool season creature, you, they just back out. And the one last thing I will say about, no, maybe two last things I wanna say about ticks, ear ticks. Even though it's called deer tick, the main vectors for deer tick are not deer, it's mice. So what you've now done by taking down the trees is you're going to increase the amount of herbaceous plant growth, which is the food source for mice. You've now just doubled, tripled, quadrupled your mouse population, which is going to exponentially increase your tick population. Uh, the other thing is there is a new tick in the state. And if you really want to have fear about insects, diseases, and ticks, then this is one you really want to be aware of. There's a wonderful tick that's called the Lone Star Tick, not because it's from Texas, because it has a single spot or star on its back, Lone Star Tick. And its saliva has something in it that they have yet to identify that if they bite us, and we become infected, so to speak, by whatever it is in that saliva, it'll make us allergic 
to red meat. <laughs> we will never ever be able to have any kind of meat. It'll make us throw up. Once you start eating, you're gonna be as sick as can be. That's all I'm gonna to have to say about tits. They're a lot of fun. Is it more than enough? <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Okay, all right, so moving along. So do we want to uh, uphold the um, notice of violation and request the site plan approval? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so my, my recommendation was, sorry, I'm muted. Okay, go ahead, Peter. My, my recommendation was to do the stabilization, which they've done, uh, install erosion control measures where necessary, which I believe they've also done, and then submit for approval uh, a replanting plan for the areas south of the pond and at the northwest water course, uh, areas that were cleared, and replant the cleared areas south of the pond and at the northwest water course. Uh, there was, uh, in 1990, uh, a plan that was was submit, uh, and I'm sorry, I have to say, and also submit the application for a wetlands permit. Uh, the, uh, there was a planting plan uh, prepared in 1990 uh, for this same area, which has uh, some pretty good uh, trees and shrubs uh, on it. Um, and that could certainly be a starting point. Um, if the Gavals do not have that plan, I have, I have it and can share it with them with email. But um, yeah, I think uh, there, there should also be a uh, understanding that the next step in the process, if we don't get an application and a planting plan is that we would go to the next step in the enforcement action, which would be a cease and desist order. Um, and what, how much time do we need to give them for the coming up with this plan and taking care of these items? Well, the, the next wetlands meeting is five weeks from tonight. That would be September 20th. I think that's enough time to submit an application and a plan. The planting uh, of trees and shrubs might be better, better done that's in right. late September or October depending on how hot our weather is because trees and shrubs don't like to get planted in the heat. Uh, so- Care, Careful, Peter, careful. You're, you're, you're crossing into my territory. Okay, I was just you gonna can... say, if it, I assume that that's correct by, by Mr. Wilcox. Oh, uh, you no, know, but that's fine. Okay, I think it would be reasonable to expect that they could get us an application and a plant, some kind of a replanting plan for the next meeting. Okay, so, and, now that, so now that there's a notice of a violation, if they do any more cutting or violate uh, wetlands, are they subject to fines? Uh, only if we go to the notice of violation and, and uh, the commission can recommend uh, um, uh, referring it to the town attorney. Okay. After that. I like to recommend fifty thousand dollar fine and be done with it. But that's his normal figure. That's my normal figure, but I, I can't have my way. <laughs> All right. So, um, is that timeline agreeable with uh, the Gavals? Oh, I guess what we're asking them to do is um, provide a wetland permit and a replanting plan for September 20th meeting. Correct. Okay. And then at a later date or at the September meeting, we give them another date for the replanting. Is that correct, Peter? And application. Yes, yes I, I think September 20th might be too early for planting some, right. some plants. So, uh, October, uh, October 16th is usually a cutoff. Yeah, October 16th is the meeting in October. That would right. be four, four additional weeks to do the planting. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Melody, uh, is that agreeable with you? 
uh, I'm here. I'd like to just add two things and then we can, uh, uh, so, so the tick, we have not had any tick issues since, since the past few weeks. So absolutely <laughs> no tick. So I just want to add that in there. And second, that the tree contractors can, um, can the commission hold these tree contractors liable because they're licensed contractors? You, you, you hired them. That's, that's, that's on your you. issue. Okay. Because I, I, I come from Massachusetts and, and in the cities, usually if a contractor does something wrong, they could pull their license. No, that's, that's can, can I address issue. you can. Alan, can I address that just for a brief moment? So there are two, two different types of companies that deal with trees. One would be a licensed arborist who, yes, they cut down trees, but the reason why they are a licensed arborist is because they can apply herbicides or insecticides and they can do pruning. But when you have a downturn in the economy, you end up with a lot of tree cutters because you don't need to be a licensed arborist trees. So you can hire anybody. doesn't matter whether they have a license, they don't have to have insurance, nothing. They can come onto your property and cut a tree. And they don't necessarily have to know anything about what they're doing except not to kill themselves, hopefully, and not to drop trees on people or animals or houses. So, so Josh, when you, when you hired this tree cutter, you checked to see if he had insurance? Yeah, he gave me his insurance policy that he had insurance if it fell on our house and-, and I, would, I would contact your lawyer and, and go pursue him for that. And, but we, we, we focus, our, this commission is focused on wetlands and uplands area. Okay. Outside of that is not our concern. Mm -hmm. um, I understand your family and your ticks and, um, but we're concerned about the wetlands issues. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're focused. Yeah, we want to work with the commission. So we, you know, the, 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 um, the environment is definitely, this is a place we're going to call home for many more years. So um, we're definitely on board. And I think September 20th, we can file that um, permit that he's saying after the fact, and then October 15th. So that would give us more time to, um, cause a lot of, uh, it's just hard to get a plan. Cause a lot of people are super busy and I haven't got back to one guy I spoke to that was a landscape architect. So if you, if, if maybe the board can refer me to local, cause I've been calling out, no, they can't. Um, I, 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 my suggestion is you go into the town hall and you can check the wetlands um, minutes or, and see who comes before the commission, pick somebody that way if you, need to but um i just want you to be clear that if you start cutting trees again or clearing or violating wetlands issues it it will not be good absolutely not we were not nothing everything that was done was done and at this point there will be nothing cut all right um can i just make one other point. The, the meeting is on the 20th of September, but I'll need the application in hand, uh, you know, uh, a week or two ahead of that. Can the town help me? Cause I did get the application, but I didn't know which one I needed to fill out, which row was with this matter. So maybe there can be some. Um... Yeah, if you go into, if you go into the, uh, um, the wetlands department, the staff can help you fill it out. Okay. Peter. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. So do we have to vote on that, Peter? To yes. You have to vote to uphold the notice of violation. Okay. Is there a motion to uphold the notice of violation? So moved. Made by Barry. Second. Second by Kevin Wilcox. All in favor, say aye. 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 Abstain. It's unanimous. All righty. So moving on. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, item five.
no new applications have been received. Um, agenda item six, a wetland agent permits received um, at 49 Alexander Road for uh, a new deck and a storage container for a, for a uh, uh, auxiliary or, or accessory building. Uh, 440 Tungstas Avenue uh, is gonna be a new house and 701 Cottage Grove Road, uh, they wanna build a Verizon wireless hub um, behind the uh, pharmacy and, and credit union building at uh, 699. Is that a tower? No, it's not gonna be a tower. Uh, they want to bring um, uh, fiber optic lines in from Cottage Grove Road to a, a hub building, which I think is some kind of a booster. I'm not exactly sure what they do at the hub building. And then they're gonna bring the, the uh, fiber optic back to uh, another pole on, uh, on Cottage Grove Road. And they need, they need some kind of physical separation between where it comes in and where it goes out, but I don't know exactly what that means. They've got some work in the Upland Review area and they, they, they've, uh, submitted their permit application, I believe, for wetlands and for planning, um, but they haven't submitted a building permit yet. Because hmm. I thought the state was all involved in those types. Yeah, it's it's not a big enough project for it to be a site count siting it's council something. thing, okay. and they're not they they are proposing to build a little uh, a little uh, building behind fence. You know, in the back, uh, in the back yeah. parking lot, but it's it's not going to be more than you know ten feet high, if that. Right. Okay. Item seven: status of ongoing projects. I started writing them down, and I got to the bottom of my page, and I had to stop because there's too many to cover. So I'll do it quick. Uh, Seven thirteen Bloomfield Avenue, right across from the town hall, the apartments. Uh, they're framing the third floor. So they're getting ready to close it up for the winter. <laughs> uh, at 65 Jolly Drive, which is uh, apartments at the end of Jolly Drive, they've started their foundation and the retaining walls. Um, at 105 Highland Park Drive, they're, they're working on the foundation. Uh, it was my understanding from the building officials that they ran into groundwater and some buried uh, organic material that they had to dig out, uh, but they're they're moving along. Uh, these are all, by the way, these are all projects that the commission permits have been, you know, applied for and and granted. Uh, 1390 Blue Hills Avenue, which is the TJX parking lot, uh, they're working on the pavement, so they're they're well well along uh, to being finished. Uh, at 151 Phoenix Drive, uh, sorry, Phoenix Crossing, the m and trucking site is complete and was recently approved for a CO. Um, at uh, 21 Southwood Drive, that's the public works site, the same, the site work is complete and they've recently received approval for their CO. Uh, at the Anthony's Way subdivision, all 12 houses have been done. There's road and miscellaneous um, plantings at the stormwater basin and a few other uh, um, housekeeping items that are not complete. But that project, uh, at least the house building part of that project is done. Um, at hey, privilege, yes. Just on that project, um, I have heard that uh, the town owns part of uh, the property at the very bottom near the road. And uh, and is responsible for mowing it as well. So this is uh, this is not correct. Um, the town did. I'm sorry, not the town. The uh, 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 Wintonberry Land Trust um, was mm -hmm. deeded the open space that uh, wraps that wraps around the project, but okay. the, right at the right at the intersection with um, Sharon and and uh, um, Anthony's way, um, mm -hmm. there is a piece of property there that's owned by the homeowner at number two, 
that town mm -hmm. of Bluefield has a storm drainage easement on that piece of property that isn't being mowed. So I'm not sure how that's going to be resolved, but town's only going to mow it at most once a year. Oh. So the, you know, the homeowner uh, can certainly mow that area, but the, the town will do it, but only once a year. Okay. Okay. Privilege Road uh, Garden Homes uh, subdivision is still going there. Two thirds or three quarters complete with building their duplexes. And they're expected to be completed uh, by this time next year, uh, all the way. Um, 35 Douglas Street, which is the uh, Bloomfield Tennis Club, uh, their project for tennis courts and, and pickleball courts and a swimming pool is well underway. Um, the Anna Grace School, uh, Crux School at 129 Griffin Road North is also nearing completion. And I think they wanna get students in there this, this fall. Um, I don't know if they're gonna make it, but that, that was the original plan. Um, and five, seven and nine Tonksis Avenue, um, soil remediation is continuing on the backside. And uh, Mr. Schwartz has been doing building upgrades to the old um, uh, hardware store building. And they're gonna be completing that. And that's gonna become uh, medical offices with a uh, new parking lot where the old, old gas station uh, was, uh, will be a parking lot. So they're moving along too. As you can see, we have a whole lot of stuff going on. This is, you know, between now and, and when the snow flies, everybody's gonna try to get all their projects done. But there may be more going on, but that was, that was a half a page handwritten note. So I thought that would be enough. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Any questions? No. It's done. Okay. Uh, let me get my copy of the minutes. Hang on. Okay. Do we have any corrections for the minutes? Just a couple of really minor ones on um, page one, <clears throat> second paragraph from the bottom. Third line says the property at 1236 Blue Zero Hills Avenue. Just get rid of the zero. Hmm. You said third from the top, from the bottom? From the bottom, from the bottom. One, two, three. Two weeks ago. It starts. Yeah. And then third line, there's a zero after blue. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's how minor that was. Okay. Yes. Now, now I see it. It's uh yeah, right. It looks like uh <clears throat> it looks like twelve thirty six it looks like <clears throat> twelve hundred twelve thousand three hundred and sixty. Uh no, I'm sorry, it looks like blue O. Blue O, that's all. Yeah, I got and, it. Um, okay, sorry. Next on um page two. Uh, three paragraphs up from the bottom. Um, at the end of that paragraph, it says Mr. Geiner, period, without a sentence. Oh. So maybe that's just hanging on. I'll have to go back and, and check that, but there might, it, this might be one of those ones where, where Jose uh, was at the meeting and, and put in a Put in his two cents, if you will, on on the applic on on the the whole thing. Uh, but I'll check. I'll go back through and either add that in or take out Mr. Geiner if it if it wasn't rel you know related. I think all he said was he agreed with you, or he just added a little extra. But, but. that's my recollection as well. But I'll double check. Okay, next. Do you have more, Katie? Nope, that's it. Okay. Does anybody else have any? So is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Made by Kevin Wilcox, seconded by... I'll second it. Barry? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous.
Is that it? Seems to be. Other business, anything? Nope. I, I do have a quick question though. Uh-oh. Was I a little too much? No. Did I go in, in depth too much? Did I hit them too hard? No, it was in no, but you scared the hell out of me about ticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to yeah. eye out for that tick. You should have jerked me. You should have jerked me and stuff. I can't eat red meat. I'm in serious trouble. <laughs> Here, here's the one thing I failed to tell you about that Lone, lone yeah. Star tick. Oh, God. Now what? <laughs> it's should, the, hey, Alan, can we adjourn the meeting and then stop the recording? Yeah, I yeah, think I, that would be good. I yeah. think that'd be a good right. idea. Yeah. Kevin, I want to hear. So let's. All right, let's, that's fine. Motion made by Kevin is saying to adjourn. Second. Second by Joy. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying? It's unanimous. All right. So stop. I'm going to push the button that says stop recording. Yeah. You want to stop cloud recording? Yes. Alan, were we supposed to?